There's Milo. He says, hi, YouTube. He says, I'm having a beautiful day here. Just hanging out. Yeah, watching people go by where we're at. Anyways, he says, you enjoy your time with Mom today, which she's going to share with you. Yeah, and I will see you soon. See you in the next video when she shows me. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I, I love everybody. day my friends I want to share a little story about my ancestry that goes back on my mother's side um, because on my mother's side my mother is from back east actually my dad too and uh, my mother's um, ancestry from her mother's side so my mother's mother has what we call Susquehanna Indian blood in us. Just a little bit, you know, because a lot of that um, Indian tribe has been uh, washed out. It actually no longer even exists from what I understand, um, other than it just being completely annihilated, right? And uh, so it's not a tribe that even is strong existence at all anymore but just a tiny bit of blood that might be washed down through the generations and mixed with other things right so it is a tribe or it is a, a well yeah a tribe that used to exist basically in the Susquehanna region and river and the main areas were like New York Pennsylvania and Maryland now even though my mother is originally from Massachusetts it's just that's where the you know the descendants and everything originally were you know living uh, from the Susquehanna Indian tribe from that basically area okay so uh, but also my mother has like Scottish in her from my dad's side and a mixture of other things right so um, I, I just kind of always have been fascinated with you know Indi the Indians the Native American um, you know history and everything and especially about this tribe that my family has you know come from or I think the proper right is Native American but of the Eastern you know tribes and it's amazing how many tribes actually existed throughout all of the United States, even here in Oregon, it fascinates me how many different tribes there existed at one time. It just blows me away. And also very little that's even left to this day. But because of that, I have always had an interest in um, learning an instrument that was common for the Native American people. And so I'm going to share what I ended up getting, and I'm so excited about it. And yeah, let me just go show you what I ended up getting, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay. All right. So we are going to open this together. Let me get this set up right. Okay. There we go. And I've already just kind of opened up most of the tape other than a few spots okay and I am so excited about this all right, well I think we could probably just open it up from here all right so we'll look at that in a second okay let's do that there all right are we ready to see what I got Alright, let's see. I'm so excited. <laughs> this has been on my heart for a long time. It really has for many years. And 
I just finally said I'm going to do it. And it'll give me something to do. And, you know, I finally get caught up on all the busyness and I have more time to relax, <laughs> have time for me, which I hope that will be soon. Okay, so I ordered a bag for it. I hope this is coming out and you can hear me. Okay, are we ready? So, um, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay, it is a Native American flute. Isn't that gorgeous and beautiful? I am so excited about getting this. And I picked the wolf, the wolf, or I can even consider it a coyote, right? Whatever you want to call it, but he calls it a wolf on his um, web page, okay? And this is a beautiful wood. And I wanted that red tone kind of wood. So this is just absolutely beautiful, absolutely perfect. And this is an A minor flute. So you always want to start off with, oops, with an A minor flute, basically your A chord, because the fingers are closer together and going to be easier for placement. I didn't know that the different flutes um, have a different chord, okay? So like an F and G and so on. So they recommend the A, and this is the A minor, for new beginners because when you get into the other, like the G, which the G has a really beautiful sound, I really kind of wanted one, but the flute's going to get longer. Your finger the placement between the finger holes are going to get longer so I've been apart between each other so I've been doing a lot of studying about the flute okay so I went ahead and went with the one that was recommended and then we'll talk about the little totem in a, in a second here and I got the bag for it to go in to protect it and then also I got a Native American flute book that will talk about, you know, placement, how to get started, and also a CD so I can play and listen and compare and also learn, you know, that way. So I'm so excited about this. Yeah. So what do you think? Isn't that gorgeous? I'll bring it up closer. Yeah, look at that. Absolutely, let me put that, make sure the focus is going to be there. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm really excited. The color couldn't be more, more perfect, more beautiful, just more beautiful than I ever anticipated. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, I just told him I, I think it's cherry. I told him I wanted the, the red. Uh, wood, you know, so whatever was going to give me um, the red. I believe it's cherry. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to give you a little story about the little totem. Okay? All right. So one of the things that I want to share is about the, the totem and picking the totem. Okay? So, it is believed with the Indians that the totem is a spirit being, sacred object, or a symbol of a tribe, clan, family, or individual. Some Native American tribe tradition provides that each person is connected with nine different animals that will accompany him or her through life, acting as guides. Different animal guides, also called spirit guides and or power animals, come in and out of our lives depending on the direction that we are headed and the tasks that need to be completed along our journey. 
These tribes beliefs further explain that a totem animal is one that is with you for life, both in the physical and spiritual world. Though people may identify with different animal guides throughout their lifetimes, it is this one totem animal that acts as a main guardian spirit. With this one animal, a connection is shared either through interest in the animal, characteristic dreams, or other interaction. The animal guide offers power and wisdom to the individual when they communicate with it conveying their respect and trust. This does not necessarily mean that he or she acts, act, has actually touched or spent time with this animal, more that they are open to learning its lessons. For some, knowing what is their totem animal is all, almost an innate process. It's as if they're always known. The drawn to this animal or having a special feeling for the animal's energy. For others, they wonder how to tell what their animal totem is. And then they actually give you some questions of how to figure out if, what, if you're wondering what your animal totem is. Okay, I'm going to skip that part. But I'm going to go down to actually two, two that I am drawn to is um, the canine, right? Anything in the canine uh, kind of family. I've always been drawn from the time I was a little girl to dogs. They were always my first love, you know, anything with a dog, you know, canine. I wanted to save them all. I became a dog trainer. So with that in mind, I've also been drawn to wolves and and coyotes, right? So um, if you're drawn to the coyote, it, they're considered to be... Um, Trickster, intelligent, stealth, wisdom, and folly, um, innocent, skill, okay, and then also the wolf. Now, he has this listed as a wolf, all right, and I believe that's towards the end here. I think this is fascinating for some of you who might be interested in this. All right, so the wolf is, um, is about, it represents loyalty perseverance, success, intuition, spirit, appetite for freedom, and can be a loner. So that kind of really fits, you know, me and my love for coyotes and especially and the wolves. And I have to share again a story when Kent and I first met and we were camping together and having fires together along the Colorado River, for those that might be new to my channel, we would always be having the f fires and I was so in love with the sound of the coyotes out in the background while we were having our fire. I was, I would get so happy and so excited when I heard that, right? But I kept calling them the wolves and I was going, the wolves, the wolves, listen to the wolves, you know, and it became like a little joke between us whenever the coyotes would be, you know, singing in the background and talking, um, he would go, oh, there's the wolves, there's the wolves, you know, and so it just became a little joke every time we were filming um, of saying, there's the wolves, you know, <laughs> and they're really coyotes, but I'm still so drawn to the sound of them and seeing them and, you know, and a couple times I got to see them in Nevada and, yeah, just that, for, especially that first year with Kent and so I had to get the one with the wolf, okay, so I'm really excited about that and that's the little story and I've just like I said with my history of of canines and and 
you know, training dogs and I'm just connected with dogs. I've always had this connection or with the sound of the wolves in nature or coyotes, right? So that's why I got that. And then also um, where I ended up getting the flute, I do want to share because um, it is a place in Tucson, Arizona, which I'm drawn to Arizona. So I was really excited to um, d finally narrow down where I wanted to get my flute and it is um, definitely uh, made by a Native American made flute is what I also wanted okay so I got it from uh, Laughing Crow Flutes and um, I will put a link down below in the description to the website of where I got the flute and I learned about where to get the flute also from um, watching Adventure Van Man and meeting Brian at one time and asking him about his flute and then I wrote it on a piece of paper forgetting where I put it and then I remembered he did a video with a Q&A of a lot of questions that people asked and I went oh my gosh I remember that video and I had to go find that video where he ends up talking again about where he got his flute because so many people ask him and I think they also call it Jonah Jonah's flute but technically it's called laughing crow flutes but I will put a uh, link like I said where I got it in case anybody else is interested in maybe getting one you'll have that link as well and you know just pa will pass on that information so I also wanted to make sure I had one with the, the feather okay because I'm really drawn to dream catchers and and feathers and things like that so um, yeah I just think that this is the most beautiful one and the price was very reasonable as well without having to you know spend a lot of money because um, some of them can be way over $100 to start off with and this one was um, $59.99 I think so 60 bucks so not a bad price as well to get started with um, the flute okay so anyway so I just wanted to share I hope you enjoyed this video and my new interest and stay tuned as I learn how to play it I'm so excited and yeah <laughs> I don't think you want to hear me as I'm learning maybe after I can play something right <laughs> but anyways so I hope you enjoyed this and my journey on getting a Native American flute and the story why all right okay so I love you all and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and as my journey carries on and thank you for being a part of my journey as it continues on, and I will see you in the next video.